And joining me now from Canberra is the new Deputy Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Mr Albanese, you've just left the first Cabinet meeting of the new Rudd government. Was a decision made about changes to a carbon pricing scheme? I'll give you the big tip, Lee. I haven't just left the first Cabinet meeting in order to leak the discussion on the 7.30 show, with due respect. We'll have what I'm getting at, basically. I suspected you may say that, but what I'm trying to get to is how quickly is Cabinet making decisions on these big ticket items? What Cabinet is not doing is making decisions on the run. What Cabinet is doing is having a considered approach to policy development and any changes that might uh, occur. Uh, that's appropriate. Uh, this is a new government that has begun well. It's begun well by making sure we have the proper structures in place. And uh, we'll have uh, those internal discussions today. Of course, uh, we have had the first Cabinet meeting and also a full meeting of the Ministry. But isn't there a sense of urgency, given that an election is not very far away, even if you went for a later election? People are being affected by these policies right now. You've acknowledged in recent days that certain things need to be addressed. I repeat, is there not a sense of urgency? The national interest will determine our timetable, not uh, pressure from the press gallery, Lee. Uh, we'll have a proper consideration of uh, policy processes. Uh, a number of uh, new ministers were sworn in today. I had a, a briefing from my uh, new department. Uh, you have this uh, quite uh, absurd proposition whereby you have uh, some of the media this afternoon were asking my office, what changes are you going to make to the national broadband network uh, before I'd even been sworn in? On the weekend, the Business Council of Australia said that an election should be held as soon as possible because the lack of political certainty is acting as a break on confidence, investment and jobs. That's a reasonable point, isn't it? The point is, Lee, that uh, we have a strong economy with uh, strong jobs growth, uh, low inflation, low interest rates, uh, low debt to GDP. All of the economic fundamentals are extremely sound, including our AAA credit rating. Uh, the uh, only threat to confidence is the fact that you have Tony Abbott, who continually talks down the economy. Well, surely you can't argue that three leadership spills in 18 months within the government is something that business can take confidence from. Well, in terms of what business can take confidence from, I think is uh, the strength of economic management that has occurred under the Labor government since 2007. Uh, more, uh, uh, around about a million jobs created since 2007. Very sound economic position. There is no economy you'd rather be anywhere in the world than Australia. The parliamentary sitting calendar makes provision for both houses to return for sessions starting on August the 20th. As leader of government business in the House, are you making plans for a possible resumption of parliament in case the Prime Minister decides not to call an election on the early side? Well, as you say, Lee, the parliamentary schedule has been uh, put out and distributed at the beginning of the year. Uh, everyone can see what the dates are. Uh, but we'll have a consideration, a, a proper consideration of uh, the election timetable. Uh, there aren't, uh, there's not a great deal of variation. There is something called the Constitution that defines when elections uh, should be held. The fact is, I'm sitting here at the end of a, uh, a three-year term. There having been a, a successful uh, parliamentary process. Uh, no, no confidence motions. Sorry to interrupt you, Deputy Prime Minister. I just want to address that point, though, of my question. It, so is what you're saying that it is possible that Parliament could return in August. That, that is an option on the table. Well, we've put out the parliamentary schedule and the election timetable will be the subject of uh, further consideration by the government. Uh, what uh, we have had in recent days is uh, the uh, Prime Minister saying he's prepared to debate uh, Tony Abbott on issues that have been election issues such as debt and deficit. He's only been Prime Minister for four days. Tony Abbott's been running a scare campaign about the economy for four years. Um, how about increasing uh, business confidence and confidence in our economy by having a debate at the National Press Club? The Prime Minister's available this Wednesday to debate Tony Abbott. He'll be available at other times as well and wants to engage in that direct debate about our economic performance. We don't shy away from that 
or any other debate. And indeed, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we'll be having uh, discussions uh, with uh, the Business Council. The Prime Minister's made it very clear that one of the things that will characterise uh, his Prime Ministership is inclusiveness and seeking to move away from the old politics of division and uh, making sure that we actually engage with both the business community, the trade union movement and the community sector. And what a great day today it was for Labor's reform agenda there at the launch of Disability Care Australia. Let me ask you, you've said in recent days that Kevin Rudd has changed since he was last Prime Minister. How? Well, you can't go through... Uh, the events of June 2010. I'm not asking you to, I'm uh, just asking without, you how he's changed. Uh, you no, said he's changed. I'm, I'm, I'm just, just asking saying you how he's it, changed. It, it, changes, it changes your character. Well, in what Quite way? clearly. Well, take for example uh, the issue of consultation. We've had a, a much more uh, consultative process uh, than uh, has occurred after, after previous uh, uh, changes, be it opposition or, or uh, or uh, government front benches. I've been in a leadership position for uh, more than a decade now in the Federal Party. Uh, we made sure that there was a really inclusive process, that all options were considered. Uh, we didn't rush out and there was a, an absurd, again, at this push that somehow we had to announce the front bench on Friday. Uh, that didn't occur because that wouldn't have led to the best outcomes. You're now the Deputy Labor Leader, you're Mr Rudd's number two guy. Will you step up and pull him into line if signs of the old Kevin Rudd start to emerge? Oh, look, I have a very good relationship with uh, Kevin Rudd, as I did with Julia Gillard. And part of my job as uh, Leader of the House over six years has been uh, to uh, knock on the door and, if need be, I'll walk in and, and say what my views are. I think uh, in uh, the one thing I would say about uh, the discussion that did just occur was it was very open and constructive. Uh, people uh, participated uh, in the debate. Uh, that's appropriate. People have to be able to put their views. Uh, no one has, uh, uh, is right all the time. We all benefit from a collective process. And certainly uh, Kevin Rudd has made it very clear that he intends to engage in that way. He certainly has. Uh, has done that uh, and uh, we will have uh, further discussions obviously over coming days. Anthony Albanese, thank you very much for your time and congratulations on your new role. Thank you very much, Lee.